Ah, yes. Food, food. One of the greatest children's television shows of all time. The story of a dude named Steve and a puppy named Blue. And whenever they have a problem, they, Blue would always play a game called Blue's Clues. Oh, looks like we'll have to play Blue's Clues to figure it out. Yep, exactly, Steve, exactly. And over the years, Steve and Blue have always figured out Blue's Clues every single time. Now you're wondering, how did Blue's Clues come to be? How did Steve get that cool striped green shirt? How did he get his notebook? And how did Blue leave her first clue? Well, it's finally time to get a clue. Come join me, the YS Monarchal Studios, and my pal Music Clues in Getting a Clue. The History of Nickelodeon's Blues Clues. <laughs> Perfect. Hey guys, it's yours truly, truly Music Clues here, and welcome to episode two of Preschool, pa uh, uh, sorry, Pop Prince Preschool and Pals. Uh, yeah, although um, I think Spicy and Toots going to be getting a brand new title. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's going to be Paw Prince Playdates and Pals. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah. Anyways. That being said, said uh, welcome to episode two. Uh, this one is actually pre-recorded in advance, advance, so this is why there's only gonna be an intro to it, <laughs> since I over already recorded the episode for it. Uh, was to write in advance. I was planning this as a separate video, but I decided to convert it into an episode for the podcast. So, oh, yes, Joy. Oh, okay. Uh, so... I just, wasn't, I just wasn't agreeing with you. Oh, 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 okay. Mm -mm. Uh, but, yeah, so... That being said, I'll hand it over to Past Dwight and Past uh, uh, MC so they can talk about... Talk about uh, the history of the ki greatest kids show of all time, in our opinion. Blue's Clues! Yep, enjoy. Hey guys, it's yours truly, Music Clues here, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Uh, but today, I am also joined by uh, a fellow fan in the Blues Clues community. Yep, hi, it's me. Yeah, it's uh, Dwight from Smart Rascal Studios. Um, and today is going to be a very, very, very interesting... Uh, a very interesting video. Now, all of you know that Blues Clues and You is the current rebooted series of the 1996 series, by the way, that's my birth year, of Blues Clues, uh, which premiered in 1996 and featured Steve and then eventually Joe. So, uh, but what you, uh, what I do think would be nice in some way or form until someone else could probably do it a little bit better, Better is talk about Blues Clues and You's history, leading up to from the current, uh, from before the show launched up to the current day. Uh, and I'm splitting this into different sections of the video so you guys will be able to read along with us. And Dwight, he is a huge fan of the reboot. He's been keeping an eye on a lot of things, haven't you, dude? Yep. So, join me and Dwight as we journey back to before, before we uh, scooted with Josh to New York City, before Sage and Ginger were born, and before this reboot even got off the ground as we talk about the history, hi history of Blues Clues and You from, now, from, uh, from before to now. Part one, before a puppy is reborn. Okay, 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 I think I got it. So, 
the original Blue's Clues came out in 1996, it was unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. Because in the show, there's this guy named Steve, and he wore a green shirt with stripes on it, and he hung out in a storybook along with a puppy named Blue, a mailbox named Mailbox, uh, a side table drawer named Side Table Drawer, a clock named Tiki Talk, a bar of soap called Slippery Soap, uh, a shovel and pail who were twin, who were brother and sister, called Shovel and Pail, and then um, a salt dispenser and a pepper dispenser named Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper. Exactly. That series. Pre- and, and it, yeah, yeah, and it lives in a house with a red roof and a purple door and a tire swing and an apple tree. And in the living room, there was a thinking chair and this really cool wallpaper. Yeah, so pretty much, so pretty, pretty much what you're saying is back in 1996, my birthday once again, it fit, Blue's Clues and You was really the first, if, uh, first, if not one of the first of its kind, and really, really was a huge success. The first season, season had kicked off successfully, and Nickelodeon was in high gear with the Blue's Clues merch. <laughs> Oh, and the, and Skidoo Freak. Don't forget about the Skidoo Freak. Oh, yeah, and the Skidoo thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, there was so much stuff that came out for the show back in 1996. There, uh, there was uh, toys, books. Uh, Magazines. Uh, of course. Oh, and you can't forget your standard set of Blue's Clues toys. Uh, Blue's Clues uh, plushies. Uh, geez, there were plenty of plushies of Blue that came out during that time. Uh, and of course, this also even split into food where we even got Blue's Clues themed applesauce. Ugh. And. Really? This Blue's applesauce? Ugh. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, dude, it was only Blue, blue because of the food coloring. Oh, right, right, yeah. And, and then Blue's Clues Macaroni and Cheese. So Nickelodeon was really diving deep into the, the series head on. And it kicks up, and uh, Blue's Clues, why definitely not one of the reasons why Nick Jr. exists today, was one of the kickstarters that got Nick Jr. up and running and got their foot in the door, door in terms of educational kids shows. Uh, so Blue's Clues and You was definitely one of the uh, was definitely one of the kickstarters to help uh, the show really uh, help not only Blue's Clues as a whole take off the ground, but the show in general. Uh, the show in general helped Nick Jr. get a lot more popular. It was to the point that the next big hit, Dora the Explorer, which would premiere, I believe, in the two thousands. Would be uh would be the next biggest success and would really propel Nick Jr. to newer heights. But that's a story for another day. Uh, but yeah, so Blue's Clues was a groundbreaking series, something that most people at that point had not seen before. Um, it was interactive, which was well, it wasn't new. New, but it was new in terms of people talking, uh, people actually talking to you on the screen. Yeah. Uh, as before, before that, uh, for that, if there was any sort of interaction, it really wasn't like huge. Like the character would talk to you, but it wouldn't really be an interaction. This was. I think the first time, at least to my memory for what I've watched in terms of cartoon history, uh, that the char- character has actually, uh, character actually interacted with you. If I'm wrong, uh, comment below. But, yeah, so, of course, you guys know that the host was, at the time, named Steve. Uh, and he, uh, his energy was infectious for this first season. It was like, it was like really infectious. Oh yeah. Um, Very infectious. Yeah. Infectious times infinity. Oh yes, total, totally. Uh, but of course, the series did have a bit of its shortcomings. Obviously, it wasn't the 
most polished out of the, all the Blue's Clues seasons. They did get better with time, of course, but uh, looking back, it was a little... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't... I don't want to say it was lazy, but it definitely was a proof of concept for future seasons for sure. And honestly, I definitely think that Blue's Clues, uh, Blue's Clues definitely set the ground running running for the series series so uh, a puppy uh, you could say a star or a puppy was born thanks to Blue's Clues uh, now going through the series' history it, uh, Blue's Clues remained amongst all the other shows that would eventually come along like Dora, The Wonder Pets all those shows uh, Blue's Clues will remain popular for for its second and third season. During the third season, however, if I remember correctly, um, uh, oh wait, hold on, I'm trying to think here. Oh yeah, so during the se uh, during the second season, I believe is when the first special for Blue's Clues ever, like special episode. Now, technically it really isn't a special episode, if we're going to be honest, honest here, because it wasn't more than an hour long, but Nickelodeon certainly treats some of their shows like that, so let's just roll with what they say, okay? <laughs> uh, but for season two, the first ever special special episode was Blue's Birthday. Oh uh, yeah, the, the Blue Birthday Cake. Yes. So, Blue's Birthday was the first really big, 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 treatable special special that Blue's Clues really got, to my knowledge, because everything prior to that didn't really, wasn't really all that big, except for maybe Magenta Comes Over, but even then, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, Blue's Big Birthday event, uh, Blue's uh, Birthday was... A really big deal. It was so big, in fact, that Nickelodeon uh, released a game based off of the uh, actual episode called Blue's Birthday Adventure. Apologies about that, folks. Uh, Dwight had something to do first. <laughs> uh, anyways, ways, as I was saying, so Blue's bit. Uh, birthday was a pretty big deal. Uh, Nickelodeon even went as far as for the mail time segment, they had actual celebrities say happy birthday to Blue. Uh, so yeah, it, it, this one was a pretty big deal, deal for Blue's Clues. The first really super ma major episode for Blue's Clues' history and all that jazz. Then, if things would stay, uh, go back to relatively normal, normal, until we get to season three, where two of a bit, uh, two really big ones, uh, actually, make that three really big ones, ones really hit. The, f the first of those being Blue's Big Treasure Hunt. Oh. Yes, Blue's Big Treasure Hunt is one of Blue's Clues' probably, probably biggest specials. Specials in terms of special episodes that are 30 minutes long. Uh, this one was a way bigger deal than, Blue, uh, than uh, Blue's Birthday. Uh, day. Uh, and why don't you tell them how this uh, episode actually starts, dude? Wait, what, the birthday one? No, the treasure hunt. Uh, no, I, I, haven't, seen, I haven't seen that one in a while. Ah, I see. I got you then. Well, the treasure hunt start, uh, episode starts out with us starting with mail time. Oh, yeah. Which is the first incident incident in the Blue Scoots franchise where we literally start the episode off with mail time. There will be a couple of incidents in the Blue's Clues and you later where we would start with mail time a little earlier than usual too, but that's beside the point. Uh but yeah. 
So we started off with mail time, and it was a treasure delivery. Uh, and it turns out that someone had set up a whole treasure hunt for Steve and Blue. And of course, we would play Blue's Clues to figure out who it was, but uh, we would try we would try to figure out where uh, try to figure out where the treasure is. Uh, and and it it had such catchy music. The treasure hunt music that was playing it was so catchy. Oh. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and, th and then, of course, you guys know that there was also a game based off of that called Blue's Treasure Hunt. And then there was even the first ever play-along uh, audio disc. Yes, a play-along audio disc of Blue's Clues. The very first one was based off of Blue's Treasure Hunt. Uh, and it was... Uh, and during that one... One, we listen for clues because obviously we can't see see Stephen Blue. Blue will listen to them. So, yeah, um, one of them that you guys may know is Blue's big uh, Blue's big treasure, and then of course, of course, uh, can you help me? Which was, by the way, fun fact, also played briefly in that uh, Blue's clue Blue's past plot that was recently uh, revealed to the public. Yeah, pilot, pilot, that plot, pilot. Yeah, yeah. So, definitely something to keep in mind, but Blue's Clues and, uh, Blue's, uh, Blue's Clues, Blue's Big tre uh, Treasure Hunt was, a uh, even bigger deal than the last one, uh, last bit special. Following that, we had something a little bit more le less big, which was Blue's uh, Big Pajama Party. Now, it wasn't all that big from what I know, but I do know that the cassette, or at least the special, had some special clips featuring Steve and so some other woman along with him. Uh, and at the beginning, Steve was going to get his pajamas, and then at the end, they read a bedtime story. So we got. Oh uh, yeah. So it was like early marketing. I heard Subway like did toys for it too. Yeah. Same. Same here. Of course, both of those, both of those uh, special episodes received books based off of the episode. So of course, no surprise there. Uh, but yeah, the next couple would follow with the holiday season. We got thankful for obviously Thanksgiving and then Blue's Big Holiday was our first holiday special and it actually featured featured um, uh, several of Blue's friends and for the first time ever other humans outside of Steve like Miranda? well Miranda didn't make an appearance until the whole Magenta's Glasses thing Uh, but, uh, it, we learned that Blue's friends actually live with somebody Blue. else. Oh. Yeah, so, it was pretty cool. And then, of course, we get to what I call the Blue's Clues Mystery Duality, which introduced a brand new character to the series. Ooh. So, in Blue's Big Mystery... Steve tells us that something mysterious has happened. Happened at the house. A fort mysteriously appeared in their backyard. Art. And they don't know who made it. So... They play, so they play Blue's Clues to figure it out? Yep, they play Blue's Clues to figure out who the mystery builder is. And it turns out... That is actually Periwinkle, the new next door neighbor. Nice. So, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. Cool. Uh, and that was the introduction of Periwinkle into the series. Now, up until that point, Nickelodeon actually had been teasing Periwinkle joining the Blue's Clues cast during the intro segment. Two, I believe, most of the uh, most of the episodes for season three, where Periwinkle would, would literally crawl up to the tire swing, swing, laugh, and then disappear. So he's been stated to appear for a while. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Uh, uh, and then in Periwinkle Misses His Friend, we learn that Periwinkle Misses His Big uh, Friend from the Big City, Plum, who eventually comes to visit us in a later episode, but yeah. And then we finally get to the one... Oh, I nearly forgot. God, there was one significant event I nearly forgot in season one that did happen. And I was in Blue's News. Uh, yeah, where we learned that Mrs. Salt and Mrs. Pepper were having a baby. Yes, uh, which was Pat Weeka. Oh, uh, hmm? uh, yeah. Yeah, well, like, 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 remember when, um, when, like, when Steve first found out on the TV chair? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Steve, Steve was in the finger chair and he sa- said, Mr. Salt, Mrs. Pepper, have a new baby. We just think. Wait. And then he's like, he's like, is it wait, is it wait, 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 yeah, pretty much, pretty much, much. So that's indeed what happened. Uh, but now we get, but uh, and Pat Lika was the first new character to be introduced to the series. Series outside of like maybe small mentions of Magenta, I think. I think in during Magenta's come over. So, yeah, uh, she was the first new character to the Blue Scoots family that was introduced. Uh, oh, yep. But then three seasons later, we got introduced to a brand new, oh, we got, got What's New Blue, where Steve and Blue decide to make a newspaper about all the things happening around the house. Oh, uh, yeah. And then at the end, near the end of the episode, Mrs. Pepper, Mr. Salt, and Paprika, who's now a little more grown up, Reveal something oh, big. Oh, yeah, they get, they get a new baby sister, Cinnamon. Yeah, uh, yes, a new baby s- sibling is on the way. C- uh, Cinnamon, who was eventually revealed as part of a one, two, three, four, four, five part, do- uh, five part series of episodes that uh, introduced uh, Cinnamon, get, uh, got ready for the baby, uh, got ready for Cinnamon, and then making changes for Cinnamon in the house. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so that was one of the very first, as I like to call it, arcs in the series. And yeah. then we get to the first, I guess if you want to technically call it movie, but let's be honest here, it's technically a half hour, an episode stretched out. Uh, Blue. Musical movie? Yep, Blue's big musical movie. Movie. Which is the first? Yeah, hey, oh, I got this one. All so right. Steve and the whole gang are playing on a big, a big, uh, a big. Uh, uh, you could be wherever you want to be. Show at the uh, at the backyard, and the man, like the opening, like where you actually see everybody like waking up and getting ready, like dang, it's just so wholesome. Indeed, indeed. And there's just there's just one big happy family. It's so sweet. Just like see them just just getting ready, like having just just see them having breakfast together is just it's just so irritating. Yeah, and that's that's when uh, you could you could you could you could tell that Steve treats his friends like family. Oh yes, definitely. You know when they're all just at my table, just talking about like who they're going to be at the show. Yep. And, uh... Family vibes before the reboot. Yep. So, but that's where the problem eventually comes in. You tell him, Dwight. Oh, right, because Tiggity loses her voice. Do, do... Yeah, doing, doing, showing what she, what she and Blue want to be in the show, Tiggity unfortunately loses her voice. Yep. So and, then, then Steve and the gang play Blue Scoots to find out who they're going to replace Tiggity with. And pretty obvious that side table drawer. It's so obvious. Heck, we even get a whole sequence 
I'm sorry to people speaking about how she really wants to be in the show, but it's just that Steve just doesn't notice. Yeah, yeah, Paul, uh, even at the beginning when Steve goes to get his notebook, he gets pulled away by Mr. Salt, 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 Salt who needs help in the kitchen, and that's when Side Table, uh, yeah. and, and that's when Side Table sings. Because, well, yeah, like, Mr. Salt was, like, baking something for the show, and then, but they could find, like, where, like, where, like, on top, where, like, all the ingredients were. Yeah. So and he's like, he goes, try to talk show. Yeah. So that's when after Steve leaves and we stay behind, that's when Side Table sings her lamentation song, saying that she wants to be in the show. But she, at the moment when she wants to talk to Steve, she tells him that she wants to give him his notebook instead. Oh, yeah. Which, unfortunately, is a recurring theme here. Side Table gets the courage last minute, but doesn't get the chance to tell Steve what he what she wants to do in the show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, it, it gets really frustrating for Side Table, and she isn't the only one. Periwinkle... Oh. Oh, yeah. You can talk about this since you know this movie, but... Uh, oh, well, uh, Perry would go inside to do a, a, a magic trick. But, um, but, but of course, uh, she keeps getting erupted by, uh, you know, by Steve Gary for a show and such. Yeah, and every single time... To- Time, Periwinkle fi- and this whole time Periwinkle thinks it's a magic show <laughs> uh, yeah but right. eventually when we of course well there is one other recurring theme Steve when we're looking for the first clue says he wants to try to find the clue first this time cause he never does oh yeah oh uh, yes the beautiful moment and yep. every time uh, when we find the first two clues, Steve is wishing that he can't. Uh, that that uh, he wishes he could find a, a set, set, uh, clue. And then when we get back from our skidoo after writing our song with G Cleft, uh, who, by the way, is voiced by the legendary Ray Charles. Uh, hey, as, as he do. Yep. Uh, he. Steve makes a determination to find that third clue. Of course, yep. But of course, everybody keeps egging him on, and mailbox his hurt the most. Why? Well, he said, "Hey, Steve, do uh, uh did I ever tell you about the time about the guy who really is uh, taking a long time to find a clue?" Yeah. Yep. That was a little hurtful, Mailbox, even for you. Forward. And that's when Steve eventually... Wait, 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 wait. Steve, uh, Steve Bird. I get it. His last name's Birds. Yeah, genius, dude. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but still, but still, uh, oof, Mailbox, that, 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 was, that was a solid bird. Yeah. That one kind of hurt. Uh, it was probably too bad, uh, that bad that Steve was almost on the verge of giving up of finding that clue. Until, uh, yeah. until everybody told him that he could find the clue. And then, eventually, he found it. Yes, he found it all on his own. His very first clue. Actually, the very first clue yeah. off clue a host has ever found by themselves without our help. Wow. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, me too, boy. Go wait, wait, hold on a second. Wait. Go back a second. You said it was the first clue to be found to be found by a host? By a Ooh. host, yes. The first ever time in any part of Blue Scoozer's history that our host found a clue before we did. Did, did that ever happen again? Please, please say it. Oh, yes. There's a couple of times oh, yeah. later. 
Oh, good, good, good. But, yeah. So, the first time ever. And, of course, we eventually found out that side table is going to be Blue's singing partner, and that Periwinkle helps Alvisa uh, keep the audience distracted while everybody gets ready for the show, and, yeah, it goes on as normal. But... Yeah. Yeah, that was the first real time time that Blue's Clues had a big, significant event. But then things were about to change. Change. Yep. Three episodes later, after the after the airing and DVD and VHS release of Blue's Big Musical, we got yep. we got our first look at the history that was gonna change. Blue's Clues forever. Part oh, yeah, boy, Joe came into the picture. Part two. Get to know Joe. So, yeah, so, uh, do you didn't want to do Blue's Clues anymore? Well, you did for a little while longer, but then, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then, so then, uh, it, in one episode, in one of the episodes before the last episode, we got to meet Joe. It's... Who is Steve's brother, played by Donovan Patton, the legendary Donovan Patton. Who some of you may know as either the cat rat from uh, Gabby's Dollhouse is one of his recent roles, or you may know... Or, 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 or if you're a really junior fan, you might know him as Bot for Team Movie Zoo. That's right, Donovan Patton. Joe himself was the voice of Bot. Let that sink in. Yeah, if you want, a lot of you were wondering, why does that voice sound familiar? That's why. Yep. But yes. So, now for those who are wondering or still don't know, you're probably wondering, why would Steve want to leave the show? He was at his peak. Well, one, I, I understand Steve not wanting to do Childhood Forever, but another real reason why he was actually leaving the show it's because he was going bald. Yep, his hair would be no more. And uh, Steve said he didn't want to wear a hat on screen, screen, so that's why they had to look for a new host. And that's why J- when Joe came into the picture, they first introduced Joe into Joe's first day, where they were going to do show and tell, or Joe and tell in this case. Uh, and, uh, and Joe, Joe was and coming. Tell. Yeah. Very and, good. Oh, and Joe was coming in. Well, we also get introduced to one of mine and Dwight's favorite characters, Boris the Duck. Hey, Boris the Duck. Quack, 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 quackity quack. Ah, oh, man, I just love that duck. I mean, I know. I mean, I, I mean, I know it was just Donovan doing the duck, doing the duck voice. While literally while holding up Boris, like he is alive, but dang, Boris had a character on his own. Oh, you know? oh no, oh yeah, very very interesting stuff up that duck. Uh, but anyways, all seriousness, the next episode was Joe's first clue. Uh huh. And you can tell him about this one, right? Oh right. Steve shows Joe how to play Blue's Clues for the first time. Which is his first time ever. At first, he doesn't really get it, but as time goes on with each episode, he starts to get into the groove of things and how things work. And eventually, he gets to think for his very first time in the thinking chair. Yes! And he solves Blue's Clues, of course, with help from us, us, and... You'll never guess what Blue gives him. What? His very own handy dandy notebook. Notebook, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, his very first handy dandy notebook, which, of course, is the second iteration of the handy dandy notebook in the Blue's Clues history. It features the thinking chair instead of just a picture of it. So it's an actual thinking chair this time. And it's drawn by Blue herself. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. But then, 
comes probably the, one of the second most saddest episodes of Blue's Clues history. I say second most because uh, to this day, another episode has sadly replaced it. But still pretty sad, man. <sighs> oh, yeah. This is it. Uh, Steve, we arrive at the house with Joe and Steve. And Steve tells us big news. He's going... He's going to college. Yep, he's Yeah, going. I know. It shook. It totally shook our, our childhood and Steve was going to leave to his clues and Joe would take over. Indeed. But luckily, but luckily, we at home were prepared. Yes. With, with issues. Yes. Nickelodeon. And, sure, and, and strong sense that Joe would be a good replacement, but mostly tissues. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but yeah, tissue, tissues were needed for that episode. I don't know how kids reacted back then when the show originally aired, but I do know I remember feeling a guilt of sadness at the seeing, seeing Steve leave. But I was glad the show wasn't ending. I really was glad the show wasn't ending. Ending and Nickelodeon now to this day when I look back did a great job of using this to introduce Joe as the new host Why still being able to say goodbye to Steve one last time? Uh -huh, yep. I mean he's I mean Joe had big shoes to fill man Yeah I mean, it's pretty, I, mean, it was, I mean it's pretty understandable yeah, he had, we were with Steve for four whole seasons, and he had, yep. and he had so many, so much big shoes to fill, so honestly, I would, honestly, it was, it was a big deal, but that's when the first new episode was Joe, it was a uh -huh. enormous change for the show. We got an actual theme song. Oh, right, yeah. With Can You Help, which are, which was are, which are our first ever episode with Joe, Can You Help uh -huh. introduced us to the Blues Clues theme song, which we would hear for every single episode with Joe up until the show's end. Oh, uh, yeah. And at the end, uh, Mr. Soul would introduce, uh, introduce the title of the episode. Uh, and, yeah, that we was... We first heard at the end credits of, uh, the Deep Joe Scrapbook. Yes, yes. It was revealed at the first ever, uh, the theme song was introduced at the first, at, 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 at the ending of Joe's scrapbook, which was a special Nickelodeon did for all three episodes to showcase Joe. Uh, uh, but, yeah. So, that was the first ever reveal, and then we got our first proper look at the actual intro to the theme when the episode aired. And then, that's when Joe started to take over the true host role of Blue's Clues, and we were introduced to his way of things. Uh, everything was actually very new with him. We had new sound effects for looking for Blue's Clues, uh, we had, uh, new, uh, notebook sounds. It was all new. It really showed that there was a mark in the era for Joe. And up until that point, it was, Joe was doing pretty good. But there was one change. One change. Insignificance. Oh, uh, well, let me guess. It was the talking clues, wasn't it? Yes. After our neighborhood uh, fest after our neighborhood festival, which by the way was tributed to Mr. Rogers, rest in peace, good sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I'm gonna miss him. What? I'm gonna miss him, but he was a very good neighbor. He was indeed a very good neighbor, one that inspired Angela, Angela, Angela herself. Uh, in fact, it would, uh, she would work together with, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Roger Productions to work on, uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, which is inspired by Mr. Roger's Neighborhood. Uh, and it's also... And then, and then later, they work on Don Quixote, which is kind of an extension 
of the Antagonist Neighborhood. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, you could say that Fred Rogers uh, Fred inspired a lot of people, but Angela herself was also very much inspired. I, and little did she know she would be working on the series in the future. A uh, series based off of Mr. Rogers, le Mr. Rogers' legacy in the future. But yeah, so basically after that show episode, which was dedicated to Mr. Rogers, we got Who Takes You to School, which was another big thing. A uh, big promo episode that Nickelodeon did. Uh, they did a whole uh, game CD release like they did with player episodes. They also did Sweepstakes, which was, I think, the first for the series. Um, but one thing that was significant is that in this episode in particular, Joe no longer drew the clues. Oh, uh, yeah. From this episode up until the end of the series, it was the infamous talking clues. Uh. Now, don't get me wrong. I still watch the episodes, but I still do not like the talking clues. Now, if we, you... We need our... uh, now, granted... Granted, the idea wasn't totally wrong. If they introduced the talking clues after Joe drew the clues, then I wouldn't be as upset, but no, it took the place of Joe actually drawing the clues, which took away a whole interactive segment, in my opinion, for the whole show. Yeah, it sure did. And honestly, yeah. I think it was the start of the show's downfall. Ooh, yep. Now, Joe still did a great job. It's not his fault that this change happened. But it, it really hurt the series, I think, think in my opinion. Uh, but that wasn't all for changes, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, a lot more changes. Yep. There was also one other change that was happened in the sixth and final season of the original Blues Clues. Blue's room. Yep, Blue's room was introduced, and in this one, Blue could talk to us for the very first time. It was, in, it was, in my opinion, one of the best things and one of the most exciting things at the time. Time, I really enjoyed Blue's room personally. I know some people don't like it, Dwight included. Yeah. But it, I mean, well, it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was still kind of cool, but uh, it did take away even more segment that as the as a show signature to play Blue's Clues song was literally reduced to thirty seconds. Um, yeah. And then uh, Blue's Loon took up the last bit of time during the show after we saw Blue's Clues, so. In my opinion, it really hurt the show, but that's when the final episode aired. Blue Stock was our final episode for the original Blue's Clues, and after that, we didn't get any more new ones. Until in 20... Oh, wait. Yeah, until, until in 2018, Nickelodeon... Yes, Nickelodeon Studios did a thing where they hosted auditions for a new host for Blue's Clues. Yes, and now we get into part three. Three, a uh, puppy, a uh, clue be born. So we- Yep, the, and, and the rise of Josh. So, so, oh, in this reboot for the ser series, series, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to you about what happened prior to the release. So, in 2017, Angela, I believe on her blog, posted that uh, she and P Terry, the original voice of Blue, Blue Tracy and... Tracy Page Johnson. Yep. Yes. And the original voice of Blue, and of course, of course, a co-producer, one of the co-producers for Blue's Clues, co creators for Blue's Clues, were, were greenlit for a new 20 episode a uh, series season reboot of Blue's Clues. In 2018, teen, that year, Nickelodeon announced 
that Blue's Clues was coming back as a 3D CGI show. And I was absolutely blown away. I still remember how I found out the news. My, one, of our, one of my longtime fans here on the channel, Joshua, post, told to me on uh, X, formerly Twitter, that uh, uh, one of my childhood shows was returning. And I asked him what? And he said, uh, just posted with a gift of Joe, Steve, and Blue. And I was like, no, no. Blue's Clues is coming back? Impossible. No way. Nickelodeon had not even remotely mentioned the series and does some new stuff, stuff for a while now. I thought it was impossible. And if anything, Dora will probably get a reboot first before Blue's Clues, if anything. Yeah. And, oh, and plus, what I, well, I, why, how I heard about it was that I looked at an article. I mean, I started stuff Blue's Clues one day. Because I was being nostalgic. And he said, and I saw an article that said, please just go back. I'm like, hold on, wait, what? Let me just look at this. I looked at one of the articles, and yeah, well, yeah it said, Blue's Clues, tried back, CGI, and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's coming back. What? I remember Blue's Clues. He said, I think I remember, right? Yes, so needless to say, we were both caught off guard, but both very excited for this new reboot. Uh, and, yep. Nicola, and as Dwight mentioned, in 2018, teen, April 17th to be precise. Oh, it was April. It was April, wow. I could have been, I could have been one of the people that went to the audition. Yeah. There's a lot of people lined up, and they're all wearing like green shirts and everything. The you have songs by heart. And every single one tried to like do like the songs and stuff and they were impressive but the only but here's the problem with the audition the whole thing. The problem was people were acting way too much like Steve and Joe and not like taking it their own way. Which Blue's Clue, which is fine. Steve, uh, Steve is a very much a big part of the series, his legacy, and I get it. But another thing that I do think think think, think is that they need a tw they want some sort of twist to the show to make it more feel more alive than the original ever could have could have been. Yep. And that's when, after so many auditions, so many callbacks. In September 13th, 2018, Nickelodeon announced that Josh De Ayla's Clues, best known as an understudy for Disney's Aladdin on Broadway at the time, will be the series' brand new host. Yeah, Josh. Yes. Josh was going to be our new host for the series. And we have also found out that Steve, the original host of Blue's Clues, was coming back to help out and was also involved in the auditioning process. So Steve had a big hand in choosing this next host. Um, but yeah. It was it was gonna be a while before we got another look at this new reboot, but we didn't have to wait too long. On May twenty seventh, yep, seventh, uh, on May twenty seventh, twenty nineteen, they released the wait. Did they did they release the teaser that day? Yes. Oh yep, on May twenty seventh. Wait, twenty seventh, right? On uh, May twenty seventh, yes. Yeah, May 20, on May 27, 2019, it was finally released. The official teaser trailer for Blue's Clues in You, revealing Josh, revealing Blue, and revealing the extended theme song. Yes. Well, a snippet of the extent, extended theme song. That was just a, a snippet at that time. Uh... Well, it was the extended theme song, apparently. The extended theme song yep. did. Uh, the extended theme song actually got released on August twenty, uh, August second. Oh yep. So, but yeah, 
So we got our first look at what Josh and everybody looks like. We didn't know who was voicing who, we didn't know if anybody was coming back, but we got our first look, look at what everything looks looks like and boy did they update the series substantially the blues clues house looked a lot more modern modern than it ever did in the original even in later seasons yeah I'm literally watching the trailer right now and everything looks so amazing it's so colorful yes so uh, to pose a difference i'll post a picture on screen this is what the house looks like in the original of course and this is what the house looks like in the reboot as you can see they added actual tiles to the roof so it would be like an actual roof uh still had the signature spirals uh and then the door was actually kind of a little bit similar to what a modern door would look like in a uh, real life uh, but it still had the signature things, uh, it still had the colorful, uh, red curtains, it still had the yellow flaming around it, it still had the signature purple door and doggy door, so it was still very much Blue's Clues in its core. The one major change that did not return for this reboot was the signature flower bundle, which was in the original for even Joe's one, even if it was a different arrangement of flowers. So, oh, it was replaced by a bush of daisies instead, which... Oh, yeah, it makes sense. It was a little bit different, but okay, okay. Then we got our first look inside the house. Which... Yep. Oh, it was just as Davis the original. Yep. Uh, we saw a side table drawer without her signature phone that she had... Had, had throughout her entire run of the original. We saw that the felt frame was next to the, was across from the yellow felt frame, uh, yellow regular skidoo frame, which was not the case in the original. The red felt frame was all the way over by the snack table usually. So this was a huge change from the original. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we also got our first look Look, look at the window. The handy dandy notebook. The handy dandy notebook phone. Yes, we got a first look at the handy dandy notebook phone. Although we didn't know it was a phone at the time. Right, right. Of uh, course. Uh, at the time, is uh, according to the free works of the song, it was just handy dandy notebook, which kind of looks like the order pad from Cafe Blue, but just with an actual notebook theme. And of course, it had the signature finger chair on it, but to match, match the new host, it had Josh's uh, blue, white and dark blue stripe, stripe pattern on it that he has on his shirt, uh, which was significant. Oh, uh, yeah. And then we also got to look at the window, too, where Mailbox usually comes in, which was a lot bigger than the original. Nice. Yep. But then we also got a look at when Josh said all our friends, he showed us a look at all the, all the characters that were coming back. We got a look at Tickety Talk, which remained, who remained pretty much faithful to our original design. Slippery Soap, who also remained pretty much original to his, uh, uh, original to his design, sign from the original. And then we also got uh, Shovel and Pale. Shovel and Pale. Who looked, again, pretty much similar to the original. But then we got Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper, who looked a little different from their original counterparts. The Salt Shaker tops weren't, uh, were a little bit more detailed, I guess you could say, in this reboot. But we also got a look at Cinnamon and Paprika. And they're a, lot, a little bit older. Yes, Cinnamon looks to be all old enough to act, uh, actually talk sentences, and then Paprika looks to be almost as old as uh, old as her mom and dad. So, Ugh. yeah. And then finally, we also got to look at Magenta, who was also CGI for the series, but with one major change: no glasses. Of course, because they'll be t because they because basically for the first season of Blue's Clues, you. They basically be kind of remaking episodes for the for the first few seasons of Blue's Clues. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, that was a yeah. pretty, that was pretty much obvious point. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, then we also got a first look at Mailbox as well, who was also pretty much similar to the original original standards. But yeah, that was our very first look yeah. at Blue's Clues and You, which Nickelodeon announced was coming this fall. November 12th. Oh, wait, wait, November. Wait, it was November 11th, right? Or was it? On, uh, on November 12th, uh, on November 11th, 11th, the series yep. will premiere. Yep, November 11th. Yes. But leading up to that, we have a couple other things that we found out about the series before the show aired. First of all, it was then announced that Nickelodeon was going to be early releasing three episodes from the first season of Blue's Clues and You to a series called Voodoo, which is owned by Walmart. Uh, and that they will be available to, for free for anybody who wants to watch it up until the series' is premiere. But uh, after that, we also got clips of what Blue's Clues and You was going to be like from actual episodes of the series. We got our first look at Mail Time. Finally. And it was exactly the same. Yeah, it had the same song and dance that, uh, that, Joe, and, uh, that Joe and Steve did, but was a little bit of a different beat, beat than the original. Then Mailbox, he didn't have his New York accent anymore. Oh, yeah. Right. That was a significant departure from the original, which told us that not the, the that most of the cast of, cast for Blues Clues and You was probably going to be completely new, since some of those were kids when they did it, and now all those people are adults. So it would make sense for a new cast of kids to come in and voice some of those characters. Uh, but we also got a significant change as well, which made me and Dwight a little worried. Mailbox, yeah. Joe leached it, uh, Josh leached in, and he didn't see a letter. And he said, no letter, Mailbox? Uh, and then uh, Mailbox said, nope, you have an email. And then that's when it's revealed that Josh's notebook is also a phone. It is a phone. Notebook phone, notebook phone, notebook phone. But that significantly worried a good majority of the fans. Because oh, yeah. right. we thought that the emails were going to take the place of the letters. And trust me when I say, say that in itself received a lot of backlash. But luckily it was kind of fixed though. Because in the actual series, yeah, there were times they would get emails. But sometimes it would be letters too. Yes. Eventually in 1, 2, Fleece is Blue, it was revealed that we were also getting letters. So... Thankfully, Nickelodeon cleared that up early on. Whew! That was almost too close. Uh, but, but then, it was also revealed, revealed on, hold on a second, November, on August 26th, 2019, it was revealed that not only was Steve coming back, but Josh, I mean Joe, was also coming back, at, back for the first episode in the series. Wow. Yes. It was a very, very big cha change. But we're a very exciting one, too, because that means we got to see a whole bunch of new stuff. Now, that being said, said, said it wasn't until short after that that we also got our first look at the To Play Blues Clues song for this reboot, which was... A mixture of the original and sort of the very first version of the song. Yep. Uh, and it didn't have that whole jazzy feel to it. It was more uh, low-key, you could say. Right, okay. But, yeah. Yep. And then after that, we just got clips of edit, uh, points to the episode up until the actual release of the show. Show, which was, again, premiered on November 11th for Nickelodeon. And then eventually added to Paramount Plus in the future. Future, of course. But, yeah. And now we're going to go over this, 
the history of the reboots episodes and seasons real quick. So the first season, as Dwight told us, is pretty much rehash of a good chunk of old episodes from the series. Oh, uh, yeah. So, pretty much reintroducing us to pretty much the whole cast. Like, literally, Meet Josh is literally snack time. Yep. And, but with the extra addition, because we got to, uh... Uh, we got to, um, what? Oh, we, we, we got to see Steve and Joe. Right, right, right. And then uh, it was basically rehashing some older episodes from the e earlier seasons. Played it with Magenta, where's Magenta's coming over, Big News was Blue, was uh, pretty much Blue's news and what's new Blue. However, this also introduced our first brand new characters exclusive for the series. And that would be... That would be... Who? You know who, dude. Uh, Sage and Ginger. Oh, right, right, yeah. Sage and Ginger. Yeah, it was revealed that they did, Mr. Song and Miss Pepper didn't have just one, but two new babies. Sage and Ginger. Who are just so old, so cute. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, but that ABCs and one, two, threes. Freeze was blue was basically ABCs and one two blues ABCs and blues one two freeze. Uh, I mean math was blue. Although we did get to go to Joe's Pleasant Store for the first time, so there's a difference there. Uh, yep. Then Saturday was blue. Oh my gosh, my heart hurt hurt at that one. That was that uh, one yeah, hurt, so man. Careful train wreck that episode. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a sadder than blue sad day, and that was pretty sad, but uh, this one was even sadder. Sadder, because blue was... Yeah, it the cake. Yeah, because uh, blue was sad. Even when she lived the poplin on the screen, she barely spoke. And even during the To Play Blue's Clues song, the song was even slower than usual, and blue... Blue didn't even come out behind the finger chair during the think, think, think part. Ah, uh, poor Blue. That, that tells you how bad Blue had it, had it that episode. Oh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then we got Laugh with Blue, which is basically what's funny. Song Time with Blue, Blue. Thankfully, they did not do Blue, the whole rainy day one. No offense, offense, that one's good too, but I love Song Time personally. And even Blue Sing Along Spectacular, which yep. is basically Blue Stock. Yep. But not Durr, because Alan Brooks showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We even got the Thinking Squad back. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, so yeah. They, and, and, yeah, actually twice. The first time was to stop a strange noise that was in the dishwasher. I mean, wait, that was somewhere. And then we found out it was the washing machine. But then the second time, we jumped to a comic book, and we finally got to fight off against a real villain. It yeah. was none other than villain eyes. It was freezing all of Super City in the comic book world. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, and all right, in the first thing it's one episode, where it didn't have no superpowers, the gang actually did have superpowers. Chickadee as Clock Girl could freeze time. Blue as Super Blue could fly. Josh as Songman had song power, and of course, uh, super, uh, slippery soap as super soap could, you know, wash up crime. Yep. So yeah, uh, but there were a couple of downgrades in some of these episodes too, like for example, oh, yeah, like, like like oh wait 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 like the like happy the newer bachelor episode. You said one of the newer batches of episodes this year was kind of abysmal, right? Yeah, a little. Like it was a little empty. What yeah. were those episodes? Yeah, uh, they were. But we'll stick it with season one for now, so we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, okay. But season uh, one of the downgrades, in my opinion, was Happy Birthday, Blue. 
Joe in it again. Yeah, at least that one did have Joe in it. Joe in it, on it, but this birthday song, come on, guys. That one was probably the worst, but that one, in my opinion, is probably the worst out of the reboot bunch that we got got in terms of remakes. And that's me being honest. Right. But then, with the start of season two, we got our very first original episode, which I got caught off guard, by the way. Wait, when it said Blues Big Beat Band, I thought it was going to be a rehash of Blues Big Band, but nope, it was a completely original, different outcome with the clues this time. So uh, that made me realize it's an actual new original episode? Huh, took you long enough, Nick. But yeah, we got our first actual original episode for the series. Uh, and from then on, we basically got pretty much a mixture of that and some remakes. Uh, and there's a couple standouts. Uh, for second season, for example, we got Blue's Treasure Hunt. Now, this one is one of the ones I think is even with the original because the Treasure Hunt aspect was great, but they actually went full-on pirate gear, gear for this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, that was actually because of another new Nick Jr. series that was coming out. Santiago oh. of... Oh, you you can speak about this. Oh, yeah, Santiago of the Seas. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah that... Yep. That show. Indeed. Basically ripping off J.K. and Emily and Pirates. <laughs> but with Spanish. Yeah. Uh, and then we have... Yeah, no, yeah, it was also the one popular for that, uh, the, uh, use your bucket ears me on TikTok. Yep, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so, yeah. Is it, is it, is it, is it me or do I have a crush on Bobby Buzz? Because I think I do, because he is rad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, and... Uh, another thing about this reboot is that with this reboot, the notebooks actually get themed a lot more. Now you guys know in the original and uh, with both Steve and Joe's fun, the notebooks would be themed sometimes, but they wouldn't really be themed themed. Right. So it was basically just a normal blues clue. Blues clues. Uh, basically, basically, most of the time, especially during Steve's one, he barely had a themed notebook. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Joe had a couple more, but even then, then it was still pretty rare. Uh, pretty rare. Uh, so yeah, I want to say that Josh probably has the most custom note, uh, a different notebook variety out of them all. Of course, we got the standard handy dandy notebook, but then we also got the super notebook. Oh, nice. Which actually had a cape this time, believe it or not. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, and then we also got uh, a musical notebook with Blue's Big Beat Band. We got a uh, 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 let's see. Hmm. Well, uh, with Blue's Big Dance Party, I don't think we got anything. But with The Night Before Christmas, we got a <clears throat> No Ho Ho book. Hey, Christmassy. Yes, Blue's Bit A Night Before Christmas, basically. Basically, you're telling me about. Uh, it could have been called a Holly Jolly Notebook. Yeah. True, but oh uh, no, ho ho! Book is just too big of a pun to not do. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and Steve and Joe also appeared in this episode. Steve for the first time in a while, though. Though, and it was so good to see him again. Although he seems to be a little obsessed with sugar cookies. Uh huh. Uh, and then um, yeah, we uh, we pretty much continued continued into that and then we went into season three and this is where stuff starts to build up towards the movie oh yeah blues big sea adventure oh yeah and it's really about i think back in september was it 
Yes. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Uh, looking at it. Okay. Um. Ah, here we go. Okay. On June 27th. On June. Uh, on July tw of 2021. It was revealed that a brand new anime movie was going to be. Uh, uh, going to be made. Mocking the 50th, 25th anniversary of the franchise. Yeah. October 3rd, 2022. It was finally revealed to the world. Blue's Big City Adventure. Which was also released in... Trailer. Yep. Which was also released in November of that year. Yep, November 18, 2022. But yeah, uh, getting back to the show... Uh, getting back to the uh, actual show here, uh, we got Our New Neighbor, which reintroduced... Periwinkle into the series. Up until this point in the series, Periwinkle's house was in the intro, but he was never really in the show. Up until this point. And then we were introduced to Periwinkle, who was different. He still liked magic. That much did not change. But he had a totally different outcome this time. Uh, his new best friend, instead of Plum, was Rainbow Puppy, who at the time we didn't know it, but was going to play a significant role in the movie. Oh. Uh, but yeah, uh, as that went on, uh, as time went on, Paving Weekle became an integrate part of the series. Uh, we even got uh, Blue's Festival of Lights, uh, uh, Blue's Blue's Festival of Life, which uh, celebrated Hanukkah, something that was mentioned in Blue's Big Holiday, but was never really explored all that much. So, yeah, we got a whole episode dedicated to that. Uh, and then, after that, we also got a whole bunch of other stuff. But now, let's talk about the 25th anniversary of Blue's Clues. Oh, yeah. That year was probably one of the best years of my life. I say one because there's many others, but one of the best years of my life because... Blue's Clues was getting a huge celebration, much bigger than the 10th anniversary. Uh-huh. We got new books, new toys, new merch, lots of different stuff. But in addition to that, they also had some pretty other stuff planned. A live... Hold on a second. Oh. A live tour? Yep. Yep. Hold on a second. Could you uh, talk about the life tour for a second? Oh, yeah. So, yep. So, in 2022, it, like, I think shortly after Blue's Big Sea Adventure, we got the release of Blue You Live on Stage. Yeah, it was amazing. So yeah, and of course yeah, the plot was very meta, and it kind of got fit with the movie because because the plot was that Blue and Josh and their friends are putting on a show in the theater. The very theater you're watching the show in. But then when Josh wonders how he can, how he and his friends can make a show, of course, we play Blue's Clues live on stage that is get to figure out how Josh and all of us are going to put on a show. Yeah, how meta of a Blue's Clues live show to have that fly. And it's really, really cool because we could do underwater and the, okay, we could do underwater and we could do to space and well, I mean, the whole, I mean, the whole show's kind of schedules like the head self, right? Yeah, pretty much. Because the show literally starts with Josh looking for Blue at the theater. Yeah. Um, yes. And speaking of which, by the way, this is what I was talking about. This time in the series, it marks the second time in the whole Blue's Clues history, history, at least as far as I know, no, no, that a host finds a clue all by himself. Oh yeah, because this time the third clue is literally us. Yep, that's right. The last clue is us. 
Well, well, we've been a clue before, of course, but I believe this is just the... really, really, really special because it's so cute because, like, because there's, like, a huge giant paw print, blue paw print spotlight, and it shines on all of us when it happens. Yes. So it was really, really cool to see that Blue's Clues, uh, uh, that uh, Josh was able to find a clue all by himself. And by the way, to all the actors that did that show, very talented group. I, ho I hope you guys are into better things now, but you did a great job. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of sad that, it's, that the show the show's closed now, but we don't the mic throw back the tour again soon. Yeah, that's true, dude. That's true. You never know. You really do never know. But now, uh, but now let's talk about the movie itself. Blue's Big City Adventure. Yeah, but finally released up, it finally released on Paramount Plus on uh, November November 18, uh, November 18, 18 2022. Yep. Yep. This was around the time, uh, this was after, of course, the actual anniversary of Blue's Clues, which was on the 25th. And on that day and the day before, it Blue's Clues was basically trending on, uh, trending on Twitter slash X for a whole two days. Days. Why? Because Steve had delivered a heartfelt message to us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a very heartfelt message to us talking uh, uh, talking about it. The tweet said, so about that time Steve went to college. And it is literally, literally, I believe I read, uh, read it, it won an award someplace, place that it is literally the most viewed tweet out of anything on Nick's social media, even Spongebob. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, honestly, that's saying a lot. SpongeBob's pretty popular, man. <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot to overcome that series, series, and I mean it. Oh, yeah. Even since it's still going. Yep. And then the day of the anniversary, we got a very special music video. You know, that was announced earlier this year to be coming, coming, but we got a very special music video that showed the legacy of the series. It started out with Steve wearing his green striped shirt and singing the do 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 do. Oh uh, yeah, while also having a notebook made by a handcrafted handy notebooks. Indeed, indeed, and and, and uh, he called Joe on and he said, "Hey, to us," and then he started sing, singing the song, which. Uh, uh, and then Josh comes in and helps and sings You Can't Spell Blue Without You. And we start seeing some pictures of Blue's Clues fans with Blue's Clues, uh, with, with them in costumes, with Blue's Clues merch. It's just so heartwarming. Yeah. And, and then uh, at the end, Steve and Josh jo uh, show a whole wall wall of Blue's Clues art and pictures, pictures from all the fans with a big blue poplin in the middle. I mean, come on, come on. Uh, and they say we owe it out to you, but honestly, we owe it out to you guys. Guys, you shaped a lot of people's childhood. Still to, the, to, to this day. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, but, thank you. yeah, but yeah, that music video has remained one of my top all-time favorite music videos of all time. And by the way, to this day, day that same music video, which is "You Can't Spell Blue Without You," by the way, hey, okay, uh, uh, I believe has over. Yep, there it is. Five, five point five, uh, five mil. Point zero million views. Oh uh, yeah. Which is a lot for a video that came out maybe about two years ago. Oh yep. Oh scratch that. Uh, oh scratch that. I was looking at the long one. Oh uh, long number. Uh, actually, make exact seven point one million. Seven point one million. 
Really? Yeah. Well, video that released two years ago. Dang. <laughs> that's a that's a large amount of views. I didn't pick Blue's because uh, I knew Blue's because it was popular, but that's a testament. Actually, but, seven million one hundred twenty-three thousand eight hundred and two views. On, on the nose, right there. <laughs> nice, dude. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. Now let's get into Blue's Big City Adventure. You can tell them the plot, dude. You and I have watched this movie, but I'll let you explain it. The plot is pretty simple. So, Blue and Josh, uh, Robbie, well, well, mostly Josh, are really excited because he gets the audition for Rainbow Puppy to perform a musical in New York City. But, like, when they, when they get, but, like, once he realizes you know, it's a New York City, like, yeah, it's got things that well to get from a storybook all over New York City. Yeah, and they realize that things are a lot different here. I know, like, I know. Like, even, even what's taking your mind that it, it, it's it's at three o'clock. Just, just, just like, it, just, just, just is kind of freaked out. He's like. Like, oh shoot, B Blue, we, we have to go all the way to New York City. And then that's when, that's when, um, luckily for them, they got the Skidoo Express to take them there. Who skidoos, skidoos to New York City. Via a billboard. Yep, a billboard. We would later revisit that, we, we later revisit that in season four, but... Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not well, the last time we see him, huh? Yeah, yeah no kidding. Uh, but anyways, wait, ways, yeah. So in this episode, in this special, in this uh, special mov movie, they live in New York City until they realize that it's quite new, and no one's quite seen them before, especially not Blue. Yeah. But uh, after seeing him we're on our way, Josh and Blue start to ease into the uh, beat of New York City. C city. Until Josh realized he forgot one thing. What? <sighs> For the... S the notebook. Oh, yeah. For the one, two, three, fourth time in Blue's Clues history. Yes, you heard me, fourth time. Josh forgets his handy dandy notebook, which is the second time in the series of all, 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 but this is a pretty big deal because that notebook also, notebook phone also has his directions to the audition. Yep. Which, uh, yeah, so that leaves Mr. Salt, Diggity and slippery to go find them. Thankfully, and trust, and, and trust me, when that part happens in a trailer, I was, I was understandably freaked out along with them. Agreed. Agreed. Like, I was, seriously, like, you wouldn't forget your hand in notebook, but Josh, Josh apparently did. Yeah, j j j j I mean, I, I know a host could forget his notebook, or a side table might not be there, but Josh forgetting his notebook for a crucial event like this? Man! Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you know what's cut to the trailer, like, got me, got me intrigued. Yeah, so I was like, oh dear, this is, this is serious. Uh, yeah. but... But thankfully, uh, Mr. Salt knows a guy. Oh boy! Oh so, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like you wanted for like at first, like you wanted to forget the notebook. Like I was on the edge of my, I was on the edge of my seat because Josh was like, without without a hey dang notebook, I think we might be lost. And Mr. Salt goes, Josh forgot his handy dandy notebook. If they're lost. We must go to New York City! Like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be sick! <laughs> Even the show's about the Statue of Liberty. Yep. So, Steve, so, 
Uh, Detective Stu shows up. Yep. Big surprise. Big surprise. Big. It made everybody go nuts and want to see this just because of Steve and Joe. But mostly Steve. Yeah. Uh, very much managed to get a lot of people to watch the movie because of Steve. Can't blame them, though. Though, though, though. Uh, at the same time... Uh, can't, believe that, can't believe that one man can make throwing up a trailer can make a big impact. Sure. Yeah, and we hadn't even seen the actual movie yet, so that was that was pretty impressive. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, all three hosts were gonna appear in it anyways, as Nickelodeon did reveal during one of the upfronts, which is where they reveal new stuff sometimes. Um, um, that uh, Steve, Joe, and Josh were all gonna make an appearance, as we see a picture of them with Blue. Uh, probably a pre-production picture of some sort, but. In this adventure, in this adventure in New York City, City, Steve, uh, jo- uh, Mr. Sa- uh, Mr. Salt realizes that uh, uh, Detective Steve has a bit of a different approach to finding things. Yep. Of course, with no thinking chair, he has to resort to some other type of thinking. Thinking snap. And yes, that includes eating a pretzel. Which was kind of uh, at the end of the trailer. Seriously, seriously, you couldn't help it, Nick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they kind of make a homage to that throughout, the se- uh, throughout uh, Stephen Joe's part of the movie. <laughs> yep. But, um... Yeah, so, yeah. Now, why Josh, Joe, uh, why Steve, Joe, and all their friends are looking for them, Blue gets an idea. You're, you can probably guess where this is going. Of, of course, they play Blue's Blues in New York City without the notebook to find out where the theater is. Indeed, indeed. And this time, the kids actually point out the clues. And the kids even sing along to the two play Blue's Clue song. That's yeah. amazing. Yes. So it's like we're actually singing along with kids in this. Oh my gosh. That's, that's, that's amazing. Just having the kids alongside them, finally. Yeah. It, it, it comes full you circle, know, man. You know, we, use, we just hear voices. It's amazing to just have these kids show up and find the clues. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. It really is so cool. I'm so so happy to see Blue's Clues like that. That it brings the show it brings the show back full circle. Yep, it does. Uh but yeah, eventually Josh does get his dream to come true. And then yeah. Now we do know that there may be potentially something in store for the twentieth anniversary of Nick Animation, which is supposed to be next year. But due to the ongoing uh, uh, strike that's currently happening with actors, actors, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go with Blue's Clues. Clues, since, uh, well, you can't really make a uh, movie without actors. So we'll have to wait and see what's happening. Uh, Blue's, Clues seems to be, uh, Blue's Clues in you itself seems to be relatively unaffected, affected, as we still have been getting new shows. But given that when I was at a convention earlier this year that Steve was not able to seemingly talk about anything related to Paramount, Emma, that, uh, Paramount that tells me that he is part of a uh, union that's on strike. So I'm not sure if Josh and Joe are. Are, are the same thing, but given the fact that Angela did just recently post stuff with Steve, Joe, and Josh, uh, uh, Josh on her Instagram account, I'm gonna take it as a no. No for those two, but yeah. Uh, that said, said, uh, speaking of which, so yeah, the movie... Okay, I'm a little biased, but 9 out of 10, paw prints. Yep, 10. Yep. For me, I give it a 10 out of 10. Dang. Good one. And then, 
uh, our next batch of episodes, our next, uh, next episodes are actually kind of interesting ones. We get an into the blue universe. No, it's no multi-universe thing, sadly. <laughs> uh, how I wish it, how I wish it was. I know. No, the wish it. got me. Yeah. And well, I realized, oh, wait, we're just going to get to space. Boo. Yeah. Yeah, they sh- there's so much to totally make like a fan series, series maybe exploring that hint, hint, wink, wink. Oh, yeah, like the series I did. <laughs> Let's play it with you, which we'll get to soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, oh, there is one thing that happened in season three, though, that was mind-blowing for Skidoo's. So everybody knows that when you Skidoo, you Skidoo into someplace and then you land someplace. Yep. But at the end of Rainbow Puppy Skidoo Adventure, we find out that there's a multitude of Skidoo flames this whole time? Skidoo World is its name. Mind blown! So all this time there was multiple Skidoo flames and that's where everybody goes? Goes yep. where Skidoo? Yeah. I, I, I'm in disbelief! Yeah. Man, really yeah, Nickelodeon kind of fooled me for a loop there. But then we get to return, uh, uh, something that Dwight predicted was an episode of his imaginary series that we'll do in a different video, Blues Played It With You. He predicted, predicted an episode of Blues Cause You before, he, before the actual episode even aired. Uh, yep. Yeah, the episode of Blues Play It With You, which uh, I still might be working on a lot at, you know? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's called Aware oh, Aware oh, Is Our Thinking Chair from, uh, I think, from season one. Let me just, you know, you just show up. Oh, yeah, Where yeah, Where Oh, Where Is Our Thinking Chair. And in that episode, uh, in, it, in that episode, Blue Fa- Blues and the robots were definitely like blues clues together. But then, when he was the thinking chair part, the thinking chair is gone. Yep, the thinking chair is gone. So then, Blue and Mailbots call a Detective Steve to help them find it. Yeah, now at the time, I thought that was a pretty good concept for an episode. I thought that was pretty imaginary. Little did I know that when I went to my convention earlier this year in Lexington, you guys saw. Uh, I was at a panel with all three hosts, and it turned out that they mentioned something about, uh, the case of the missing thinking chair, which blew my mind. Yeah, it blew my mind, too. I was freaking excited, like, I actually predicted it. Way before the episode, way before the episode even remotely close to being aired, aired, and it was actually straight down to the same concept. The thinking chair was missing, literally missing. Oh my gosh, I predicted it. Yes, and of course, in case you were wondering, yes, he did also predict that Detective Steve was indeed involved in this one. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah, uh, it was a pretty good episode. Oh, and you never guess who done it. It was Joe. Yes, it was Joe. Oh, Joe, who wanted to put on a family picnic? Picnic for his brothers. Uh, of a barbecue, if you will. Oh, barbecue. Just for all three of them. Because he missed him, m- missed his guys. Yeah. Such I mean, a come sweet. on. That song that's that song really threw you for a loop. Oh, that was not, that, that was so sweet. Yep. But yeah. Uh and then Dwight actually predicted another episode for season four, which is actually something we're gonna talk about right now. Uh, so season four, four also was split into, and this latest bunch was actually aired on Nick Jr. Because at the moment, at that moment, Nickelodeon was doing uh, every Paw Patrol ever special on the main channel during the Nick Jr. segment. So Blues Clues' uh, new episodes got sadly shifted to Nick Jr. 
which I'm glad they still air, aired instead of not airing at all, so I'm thankful there. But one of the episodes that was there was The Wizard of Skidoo. Uh, yep, 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 yep. And one of the episodes with Blue Playdate with you was actually based off of The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it's season 10. It's called The Wizard of Blue. It's where the Playdate family states their own spin on The Wizard of Oz. With Blue as Blue Thee, Young Dude Blue as the Scare Blue, like the Scarecrow, Side Blue as Tin Blue, and Side Table as the Cowardly Drawer. And then, yep, I'm in it. Yep, that's right, I'm in it. As Gordon the Good Warlock, taking the place of Glinda the Good Witch, because who needs a good witch when you got, when you got a good warlock? And then Tiggity is the Wicked, wicked Clock of the West. And then, you know, Alex, you know, yeah, music uh, boost. Yeah, he plays uh, the wizard himself. Yes, of course. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Dwight predicted that way before Blue's Clues did. So, do you have, like, Blue's Clues predicting powers or something, dude? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, I do literally have an episode that's based on when back when every back when everybody was auditioning for Blue's Clues and You before Blue's Clues and You came out. So fair enough. But yeah, this latest batch of episodes, I gotta admit, can't, the first set was kind of abominable. I mean, they're still passable, but they, they weren't really all that interesting. <laughs> The second half, though, oh my, oh, oh yeah, they were interesting, all right. Uh, Wizard of Skidoo, first time, uh, first time since Skidoo adventure that Josh and Blue can't Skidoo home. Oh no, they're stuck. Uh, but of course, the Wizard of Skidoo helps them. And then Josh's crummy, uh, and then Josh's crummy day, which, believe it or not. Nothing <laughs> goes right for Josh. He even misses. Yeah, he even doesn't even cut the freaking guitar when when the when he's gonna strum at the end of the to play blues for song. Yeah, you can tell that Josh is pretty frustrated. Poor guy. They even skid you to the bad day cafe where everything is all out. Yeah, but what? what? what terrible service that cafe has. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, but then we got Josh and Blue's ice cream shop. Well, Josh and Blue opened an ice cream shop. Pretty standard fare, right? Except one thing. Everybody is missing! Oh, man. I kind of also predicted that. Oh. Let's go about the ice cream part, though. Oh, right, isn't there a missing, a missing, a where, where's everybody episode? I think so. Hold on, uh, let me just look. Uh, uh, it's somewhere in here. Like, earlier, I think it was like season seven or eight or six. Hold on, hold on, let me just check. Aren't we forgetting someone? Yeah, it kind of uh, similar to that, but instead it's... Oh, wait, actually, it's the, the case of the missing uh-oh. Ah, oh, right. Thank you. Uh... Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What's different about this one is that everybody's missing. Yes. I mean everybody, including side table drawer. Uh-huh. Which means that Josh has to write on his handy dandy notepad. Hmm. I wonder if that's a small homage to all those who didn't have actual notebooks. Right. Uh, and then in the smelly smell. Woo! There's a big smell in the house. Woo hoo! Oh, like really bad. Like super duper bad. Bad. To the point where Josh doing the. Uh, at the end of this, uh, to play Blue's Clues song, says that we wanna. Woo! That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we have Rock on Rainbow Puppy, where we skidoo back to New York City for the first time ever. 
Oh my gosh! Wait, is it the is it that is that when we get the the, the like the real New York City or is it animated New York City? Unfortunately, animated. Uh, come on! They had one opportunity and they ruined it. Yeah, it makes sense because it's not you know. Yeah. Still, it would have been nice to go back to real New York City, but I get it. I get it. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, then we get Hello Mexico City, where we travel to Mexico City, uh, and then we get Josh Phil, 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 uh, visits the Philippines. For those who don't know, don't, don't know Josh is uh, Filipino. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, which, uh, is kind of qu- quite obvi- obvious, in case you didn't know that, but, uh, in some episodes of some of the seasons of Blues Clues and you, you, he introduces some of the culture of Filipino, such as music and babinga, which is one of the dishes that they have over there. Oh, yeah, delish. Uh, uh, oh, and, uh, we also get introduced to, uh, Josh's Lola, who is played by uh, Kill Leave, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, uh, who does a wonderful job as Lola, by the way. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, but, um, yeah. And then we have Happy Birthday, Sage and Ginger, which is currently the latest episode that we have for Blues Playdate with You. Uh, oh. Ooh, did I say Blues Playdate with You? Wrong one, that's Joy series. Series we'll talk about in a different episode, uh, a different video. I meant to say Blue's Clues in You. Sorry! Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so basically, um, okay, uh, okay, so according to Winklepedia, we're supposed to have 26 episodes for this fourth season. Oh, yep. So, we're up to 22 right now, I believe, so we should be getting the last four sometime soon. Oh, man. But, yeah, uh, it's very interesting to see Blues Clues and You get so much new stuff. stuff, And that is pretty much the current history of Blues Clues at the moment moment. As I said, I don't know what the future looks like. With the current strike going on as of this video's recording, I'm not even sure if we're going to be seeing the movie next year, year if anything at all. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to even see um, too much in regards to what's already been recorded for Blue's Clues News since we haven't seen any new episodes since the last batch we just got. So, it's quite the mystery for the time being, being in, regarding Blue's Clues New, but even if it does end on Season 6 instead of getting our Pot Must 5, even though I will be significantly bitter about that, <sighs> I will be, I am glad that Nickelodeon finally, finally, finally brought back my childhood show. Yeah, me too. Uh, because, fun fact, if it wasn't for that show, me and Dwight would have never met. Uh, we literally met over Wattpad, Wat, uh, Wat and uh, we've been friends ever since. Yeah. And, of course, I still own the Funko Pops of Steve and Blue. Yep. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool, but Blue's Clues and You is... It's just so great to finally see the series actually get it what it deserves. Now, don't get me wrong, Blue's Clues did, was very popular back to, in the day, too, but Tora kind of overshadowed it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh, and ironically, Dora is the one that's getting the reboot next year. So, <laughs> she was on the other foot. Blue's Clues got, uh, got the foot ahead of Dora this time. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's so great to see Blue's Clues finally back. I'm just so glad to see the series back up, back running, and just back in general, general, even if it's just for now. Now, I'll always remember Blue's Clues, Blue's Clues for all the stuff that it brought, brought to the series. Yeah. Uh. If it, yeah, if it, if Blue's Clues, you had something, I, I, I'm gonna miss it. 
I'm gonna miss it too, man. I'm gonna miss it too. But like all things, all good things must come to an end sometime. We're just gonna have to enjoy the vibe while it lasts. Yep. Uh, would it that be twenty uh going uh any uh twenty twenty four going into twenty twenty five or even if it doesn't end until twenty twenty six? Six, I'll still be happy that Blue's losing you existed because it gave the series a much needed refresher and brought the Blue's Clues community back together. Yep. Uh uh and it's thanks to that that Josh actually got to go to his first ever convention. Which, as many of you already know, thanks to posts on Instagram, that I got to meet all three hosts. <sighs> oh, yeah. Uh, that was a really cool day for you, huh? Oh, uh, uh, I will never forget that day in my entire life. Like, the only thing that could have made it better is meeting Terry and Angela themselves, but like the chance of that happening is almost hip to zero. Okay. Yep. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane of, of going through a little bit about Blue's Clues' original history and then more about Blue's Clues and News' history because Blue's Clues, in my opinion, is... it's As you guys know, it means a lot to me here on the channel. channel. It's literally my logo. Logo. Literally the reason behind my name. 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 Uh, and literally one of the reasons why I'm even doing YouTube today. Hey, had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't be here doing these videos for you right now. Yeah. Um, and it introduced me to new people like uh, Dwight here. So if it wasn't for the show, I wouldn't have met it. Reboot or otherwise. So thank you again, dude. Dude, too. Oh, no. Oh, no problem. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in another video, which I have planned for the future after we get the Blue's Clues reviews out, which will probably come out before, you know, come out before or after this video, depending on when, uh, we will do a video talking about our imaginary series that we've been working on called Blue's Played It With You. And I'll introduce you into a series that I have actually been doing since my childhood, but I have not talked about s since now. Uh, uh, which is called, well... I'll save that for that video. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I can confirm with you, Dwight, that we will be doing a, a video on Blue's Playdate with, uh, Play with you. I just don't know when, but it will be coming. Yes. You guys are you guys are in for a treat, because this is like, sure, the first two seasons are, you know, basically English Clues. I think mean, yeah, we do play both for the whole lot the first few seasons. But once we get to the third and onward, does it take a turn for the strange? Yeah, it really does. It does trust me? <laughs> Wait till you see some of the special seasons he has cooked up in there. <clears throat> anyways. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, that's all for this video. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. If you like what you see, see, be sure to check out uh, Dwight's stuff on Wattpad. I'll leave a link in the description below to his Wattpad. He works on more stuff than just Blue's Clues, of course. Uh, he's worked on uh, quite a few of that different stuff. Uh-huh, yep. And currently, I'm still working on uh, Disney's What You Wish Upon Studio, a short series based on, uh, based on, Disney's Once Upon a Studio, as well as a brand new uh, special for the bad guys based on the bad guys holiday special, a very bad holiday called The Bad Guys Tips Very Bad Holiday. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that that's going to be cool. We look forward to seeing more information about that. But yeah, if you want to see more of Dwight's stuff, stuff, uh, be sure to check that out. If you want to see me talk talking with Dwight during an interview we did a while back, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to our interview clues episode where we interview Dwight and talk about his stuff way back before the whole balloon of uh, oops, I mean, before the whole big thing happened with season three and beyond. Can't spoil it just yet. <laughs> Nearly did. And let's just say there's a whole different universe out there with our series. Uh, 
Uh, yep. Uh, but yeah. All right. All right. Uh, this is yours truly, Music Clues of the Media Maniacs. And Dwight Burgess of Smart Rascal Studios. See you guys later. Oh, actually, you know, dude, I mean, this is a Blue Scoops theme song. You really think we can't end this without singing a so long song? Yep. I guess it's time to stay so long, huh? But we're gonna sing one more song, right? Yep. I got this. Thanks for doing your part. You sure were smart. You sure worked hard. That's what me and you and our power blue. We can do anything that we want to do. We can do anything that we want to do. Boom. Not drop. <laughs> you got uh, you, uh, you got it. That may or may not be a hint toward, or towards that <clears throat> uh, new se- uh, series we would be, uh, we've been hinting at. Anyway, oh, yeah, you guys, uh, are, you guys are going to love the reboot we made. Yep. All right. Well, anyways, that's all for now. So long, and see you guys later. Bye. Bye, guys. And. Wow, those past versions of us got it made, huh? Indeed. And that, my friends, is the history of Blues Clues. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special episode of Preschool Pop uh, Pop Prince, Preschool and Pals. Whew, that's a mouthful. Uh, uh, But I just wanted to say say before we go and sing out and uh, say so long, Dwight has a second clue to the top secret project we're working on. Really? Indeed, indeed. Really, 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 really. Oh, 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 oh I mean, uh, oh, oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, totally, dude. Totally, oh, totally. So, what is our second clue? Uh, uh, second clue. Really? Really? You want me to actually say this? You really want me to actually say this? Because, I mean, I got a lot to spill about this, but I know I gotta do, like, three clues. Of course, like, blues clues, but, 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 it's only the second clue. I really want to spoil so much, but, what should I say, dude? Uh, okay, maybe I should help guide you on this one. Say some, something a little bit more than the last time, but not too much. Not too much, a little bit more. Mm, okay. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of, of why Blues in the House. Okay, so first clue we got is Blues in the House, right? Well, why? Well, uh, well, one, well, it's because this series takes place after Blues Clues and You ends, you know? And Josh is leaving. So, it turns out, since Josh can't be a host anymore, the only person who can is blue. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. And two, it's also because it's also because um it's also because Josh gives blue something she's never had before. Indeed, indeed. Yep, a real connection with the viewer. Indeed, indeed. Did. Now, all of you may be wonder- wondering, wait, how can Blue be the host h- host if she's a puppy? Well, like I, like I said, it might make sense once we get to the teaser episode, but uh, another reason, another small little hint to add on to that is that this Blue might not be the usual Blue that we all know and love. So, it's sort. Well, I mean, yeah, she technically is, but, well, this is, this is supposed to be a sequel series of Blue's Cozy once it ends. Well, well it kind of is, but at the same time, it kind of is it. Indeed, indeed. So there's your second, yep, so there's your second clue. Clue. Your second clue is 
This is uh, Josh passes the host role over to Blue uh, because he can no longer be blue host anymore since Blue's given you have ended. Ended. Yeah, and with, and with that, she gives Blue something really special. Indeed, a connection with the viewer. Viewer, and 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 and, 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 and can, I, can I just go ahead and say it? Ah, uh, uh, I think I got this one. A uh, one cup of dude. Dude, dude. So no. <laughs> uh, but I will. But that little last thing is this blue may not, may or may not be the blue that we all know. So there is your second clue. The third one, one may or may not tie it all together, Edda, But that's gonna be safe for the third episode, which is our first re our review of the very first season of Blue's Clues. Clues. Yep. Uh, now we will be doing these review clue episodes throughout every other season. Uh, uh, every other season. So just know we will eventually get up to Blue's Clues and you at one point or the other. But uh, for now, uh, we will see you guys in episode three. Uh, which is season uh, uh, the first ever review clues, season one of Blues Clues. All right, dude. All right, dude. Time to say so long. Really again? Hey, I'm sorry, dude. Dude, dude. Time flies while you're having fun. But, <laughs> but can we? Can oh, 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 oh. We're gonna sing one more song, aren't we? Uh huh. <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. I'll take it this. I'll take it this time. <clears throat> but really? But, 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 but I wrote something so long because song is awesome. Come on. I, mean, sure, I, 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 I mix it up every once, every once in a while. But, you know, it's different every time, you know. Uh, hey, come on. L let me take a uh, crack at it. Please. Uh, really? You sure? You sure? You sure you can give it a you know, you sure you can give a new twist to this old long song? Are you really sure? I'm sure I can. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> I'm, I'm making any promises, though. Thanks for, thanks for doing your part, part, part. You sure are smart. You sure worked hard, hard. Cause with me and you and Arthur and Blue, cause we can do. We can do, we, 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 we can do anything that we want to do. Who, 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 do, do, do. Oh, okay, that was, that was, that was good. <laughs> I tried. Well, I, 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 it, it, it was just good, you know. It wasn't spectacular or great, but good, you know. Hey, I'm, I'll try to do uh, change it up every once in a while. We'll switch off your, every episode. Sound sounds like a deal? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, for the outro to this next episode, which is also being recorded, you get to do it. But, anyways. <laughs> That's all for this episode of Pop Prince Preschool and Pals. We'll see you guys next episode. Oh, and yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, everybody. I'm so hyped for what we got in store for the big, you know, episode. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go.